UFC Power Rankings, folks, for four rounds into the competition. Uh, some big heavyweight matches this weekend and um, some interesting results. We'll go through them, uh, rank the 16 teams, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on who you would have high and who you would have low. As we get into the rankings, um, I don't know, we get into the season, we kind of get some more interesting rankings, I reckon, but um, here we go. Uh, 16th is still Zebra. They're still at the bottom. Uh, they are the only team to have lost all all of their matches thus far. So it's it's kind of hard to rank them anywhere but 16th spot. They're in 16th spot on the table as well. Um, they've definitely been better than last year. Like, they lost to the champion Stormers 20 points to 37 at home. Um, they did come back from like 17-0 down to be 14-17 at one point. But ultimately, they're still winless. So... Yeah, uh, work in progress, encouraging signs, but as I said, still uh, winless. The Scarlets are in 15th. They are uh, down a spot. They are the only other winless side, although they have had a draw. So it's not like they've lost all their games, but they still haven't managed to win one. Um, they lost at home. They lost at home to, uh, to Cardiff. Um, they were seemingly making a bit of a resurgent comeback towards the end of this game, but then I uh, I think the Fafita red card probably killed killed that for them. Um, they also had a try chalked off for a forward pass, so on another day it could have been a Scarlet's win, but ultimately it's a home loss, 16 points to 10, uh, two local rivals Cardiff, so... Um, yeah, not the best start to the season for the Scarlets. Uh, another Welsh side in the Dragons. 14th spot for them. Down a big three spots. Uh, away loss at Benetton. Benetton have been in good form, so there's no real shame uh, in that one. But also, like Zebra, 17 nil down to start with is going to be hard to come back from. And um, eh, they, they, they couldn't get it done. So yeah, this, the Dragons record is 1-3 and three now. Um, at least I updated their logo. So happy days. That's that's at least one encouraging sign. Uh, lastly, Edinburgh. Goodness gracious, Edinburgh. You guys are supposed to be virtually unbeatable at home. That was kind of Edinburgh's thing last season. Tricky on the road for them, but very hard to beat at home. They lost. They lost to the Lions. Not, not quite clicking yet. It wasn't a, a, uh, a blowout by any means. It was a close game. 22-19, but ultimately, that's the kind of game you would have thought Edinburgh is going to win, eh? Just not quite there. Still got some of the most exciting players in the U.S. Like Darcy Graham has been on absolute fire pretty much since round one, hasn't he? But um, yeah, ultimately, Edinburgh's one and three. So tough, tough start to the season. We're not used to seeing them in the bottom row. Uh, another team which is down is, uh, is Munster. The power rankings had them up a little bit too high, I feel like, last week with their win over um, Zebra. Well, back down to earth a bit. They're down three spots, 20 points to 11 losers away to Connick. Um, admittedly, their try, I forget who was the scorer, out on the left wing, was a bit of magic. Like, the try they scored was very, very nice, but Munster just don't seem there this season, eh? It's, it's been a bit ugly. I know there's been a change at the top, but... It's like one of the assistants who's taken over in Graham Roundtree. It's not like it's a whole new setup. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's a troubling one. I don't know what else to say, but it's a long season. So we're four games in, but it's, it's not been great for Munster thus far. Speaking of Connick, wow, first win of the season. I had them down in like 15th last week. Or was it? I don't know. They're up four spots. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that is it. Connick, they get a win. Unbelievable. They were none from three. What a crowd as well. To go and support a winless team. That's loyalty, that is. Like, proper, proper good vocal crowd uh, out there in Galway. So, happy to see. up They win 20 points to 11. I mean, Jack Carty's try that he sets up for uh, Mac Hansen. Also, speaking of things of beauty out on the left wing. Very, very tasty stuff. Um, they get a really long-range more try, which the TMO has to have a long look at. But ultimately, Connor is... Um, they're on the board at last, so uh, happy days. It's uh, onwards and upwards uh, from there. The Ospreys we got in 10th. The Ospreys uh, sadly got a bit of a hiding uh, this week. Um, they went away to Ulster and got beaten 47-17. So 
Uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot of bright spots about that. It seemed like Jack Morgan did all right. I think he saved a try and scored a try. So, yeah, an otherwise pretty disappointing uh, day that was kind of a, a long one at the office. So, um, yeah, down two spots there, a win, two losses and a draw after that. And then uh, the last of the Welsh teams, Cardiff, the only one who managed to get a win this week over another uh, another Welsh team in the Scarlets. 16 points to 10, like I mentioned. It did seem like they were under the pump towards the end of the game. They had a couple of yellow cards, I think, which, uh, you know, they conceded at least one try, the McNichol try, when they were a man down. But um, the Reese Carey kind of line break and offload is probably their moment of the game. That was, um, that was pretty magic. Nothing like seeing a prop... Uh, you know, we'll chuck the ball around like that. But I got him up four spots. Maybe a little bit much, but it's an away win, which is not always the easiest to come by, um, even if it's over Scarlet, who have been having their final start to the season. So there you go. That is the bottom half of the power rankings. Top half, we've got Glasgow, who had a good win. A really good win over the, at that point, unbeaten bull side. Um, yeah, Glasgow 35-21. Their forwards really fronted up in that one. I know Cancellieri was on fire as well, but if you're going to beat the Bulls, I feel like, you know, you need to show some power up front. And I thought Glasgow really did that. So um, really, really pleasing. Up four spots for them. Very much a bit of a yo-yo team thus far, uh, Glasgow. But I mean, two and two. So we'll see if they can back up uh, next week and, and go on some kind of run. The Sharks. I've updated your logo as well. Will wonders never cease? Uh, two and one are the Sharks. That's their first loss of the season. Remember, they're a game behind. So their away loss to Leinster has seen them plummet uh, three spots, which is probably a bit harsh. But the fact that they're only three games in means they go from a 100% record to 66%. That's quite a drop, right? If a surgeon told you you've got a 100% chance of survival down to 66, that's, 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 that's not good odds. It's still... More than 50, but it's a big drop. So, yeah, that's just, um, they're a game behind everybody else. That seemed like a proper magic game. I wish I'd watched that one. It was on at a pretty horrendous time uh, in the morning here in NZ, but I've watched the highlights, and it's a try fest and some of the best tries you will see from both sides as well. Abrahams gets a couple. One of them is just unbelievable. Um, but, yeah, Fussy gets a couple. They get a red card at the death, which takes a bit of... Um, you know, a bit of a shine off the fact that they at least scored four tries uh, to get the four try bonus point. But um, I mean, there's no shame in losing, but it's 54 34. So it's a, it's a big loss. But um, yeah, certainly an entertaining game, uh, if nothing else. Uh, Benetton, having a much better season than last year. Benetton, goodness gracious me. Benetton, 3 and 1, man. 34 14 win over the Dragons. So it's not the biggest of scalps. But, I mean, the Dragons were pretty good value at home last week. So, yeah, man, Benetton giving them a 20-point defeat. They played some lovely rugby, some some good mall stuff, uh, some good play from the backs. And Padovani gets a nice try. So, um, yeah, man, the Benetton's been a, been a really good team to watch so far. So they're up one spot uh, into sixth. Really pleasing compared to both of the Italian sides last year were a, a bit disappointing, especially Zebra. But, I mean, um, nah, Benetton. Benetton's doing all right. Uh, and the Bulls have gotten fifth. Bulls suffer their first loss of the season. They're at three and one. Um, yeah, that was just one of the, I think the worst game I've seen them play for ages. Like they, people have been saying um, that they haven't kind of been firing on all cylinders just yet this season. Um, and yeah, maybe, maybe that showed a little bit. Maybe they got caught out. Like the other games they've been able to kind of hang on or kind of, you know, coast through whereas uh they they met a pretty rampant glasgow team so you, you needed to be playing better rugby than that so down three spots uh for an away loss to glasgow is again maybe a little bit harsh but going from 100 percent down to 75 in terms of win rate that's just um one of the things in that uh up uh ulster ulster like i mentioned gave uh the ospreys a bit of a bloody nose i mean speaking of of some nice tries. Ulster scored a bundle. Luke Marshall got a double. Sam Carter, the big Aussie lock, also scored two tries. I don't usually remember that guy scoring tries at all. Of all his years at the Brumbies, I don't, he's not exactly a try scoring lock. Um, the fact that he gets two tries in a game shows how dominant Ulster were in that game. So, yeah, man. Um, 47 points to 17. They are also 3-1. and one. 
it's been a pretty decent start to the season, albeit um, last week they'll still be smarting about, but a um, decent way to bounce back. Uh, the Lions, bit of a surprise package, man. You guys haven't been in the top row of power rankings since, um, I don't know, since Super Rugby 2018, 19? It's been a while, Lions. It's been a while. Uh, 22 19 away winners at Edinburgh. Only the second time after Ulster that a team has gone into that new Edinburgh stadium and uh, managed to get a win. So that's no small feat. Great road trip. They've gone three for three on the road in Europe. Unbelievable. Like the Lions, the least fancied of the three South African, uh, four South African teams, doing really well. Very pleasing stuff. So um, yeah, happy days for Lions fans. I'm really pleased. Uh, the Stormers, goodness gracious, I even updated your logo. You didn't need it because you didn't change your logo, but uh, your old one was looking a little bit dated. So, um, yeah, Stormers in second, up a spot, um, still undefeated. One of only two undefeated teams in the URC, 37-20 winners over Zebra. It's not exactly earth-shattering. It's maybe to be expected. Um, the Fords seemed to really dominate in that first half and the back scored a couple in the second. Weird looking Stormers grey jersey. Um, not their most attractive kit that I've ever seen, but something a bit different. So there you go, 3-0. and The Stormers are still like the Sharks, a uh, game behind everybody else. But yeah, man, can't complain with 3-0. and But it's still not enough to topple Leinster from the top of the power rankings. Leinster are 4-0, and 54-34 winners over the Sharks. I mean, admittedly, a really tit-for-tat game until Leinster just kind of powered away with it at the end. Um, some good tries from the Fords. Uh, some nice, like, cross kicks and wide passes. So, yeah, man, Leinster uh, at home. Really hard team to beat. Uh, the Sharks gave it a good crack. But, yeah, over the course of the 80, it was... Um, it was always probably going to be a bridge too far, but um, yeah, we will see. You guys let us know what your thoughts are. The URC has been a pretty uh, entertaining competition thus far this season. Some good results, some upsets, some close ones, some really nice tries. So um, happy days. You guys let us know your thoughts. Where would you be ranking the teams if you were doing so? And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon.